Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Today we'll be tying a um, another Gary Hankey pattern. Uh, it's the Alberta Boatman. Um, this is one that he came up with several years ago. Um, I know it's in the uh, the Zemperfly catalog as well. Um, really, really, really effective pattern. I've done extremely well with it here in uh, in Alberta, and I've done extremely well with it also in uh, British Columbia. Um, fairly simple pattern um this one's got a tiny twist to it this again is one, another one of his twists um so the alberta boatman is just tied with um zemperfly uh micro glint the body and then just some some sort of rubber legs local legs whatever um this one here also has a shell back um made out of zemperfly flat braid um so I will uh, get going on the actual tying here. So what we have in the in the vise today is a Hens BL 599 in a size 10. Um, on there I have some uh, of these check beads in a ruby. I think it's the color, yeah, ruby. Okay, you buy these at Michael's <clears throat> or Joann's down in the States or wherever. Um, uh, like I said, I'll be using uh, Zemperfly Micro Glint Tinsel and a Golden Olive for the body. I'll be using some Zemperfly Flat Braid in the Fluorescent Green for the shell back. Now I also use the white for the shell back as well. Uh, this time I'll be using the that uh, the green. And then I'll be using some Nano Silk as well for the underbody tying in. And then I'll be using some of these uh, Chartreuse Local Legs. Okay, let's get her going. So I'll start my nano silk. Sorry, put the bead back. Start my nano silk. <clears throat> uh, then I will take um, the shell back. Where is it? Right here. Just take a piece of, of the flat braid for the shell back. And I'm going to just clean up that fray a bit because you don't want that up at the front here when you're tying in. So I'm going to actually tie it in this way. Okay, so tying it in like that, facing forward, right back up to the eye, making sure that this is flat and right on top. So you want it flat and right on top. Okay. Then I'm just going to take my nano silk, and the reason I'm using the nano silk here is I want this to stay thin because the bead's got to go back over top of this. Just make sure it's all tied down. Take my whip finishing tool. Just give that a quick two, three turn whip finish. You're finished with your nano silk. Get rid of it. I like taking this and roughly. Just cutting it a little longer than I need. It just helps so it's not in your way. Put your bead back over top, like so. Take your flat braid, your sorry, your uh, micro tinsel. Start it right behind the uh, of the uh, bead. Take this all the way down around the corner a little bit. So I'll tie these in a, in a uh, 10, 12, and a 14. So again, I'm just gonna touch and wraps, bring this back up. Build up a little bit right behind that bead there. Go down and back and down. And now I'm gonna try to take this hump out of here. There we go. So I'm only going to go back about three quarters of the way and then back forward again, just building a bit of that taper. And I'm going to stop right about there. Now I'm going to take my local leg and I'm going to tie it in like so, facing forward. The starting of these can be the the hardest part it's really not that hard but just getting them started because you want these facing forward when we're done 
And the reason is because you want these things to move back and forth, right? Every time you strip. So now I've tied that and just a little bit of a, of a loose figure eight. Now, the best bet is if they would be forward and up. Sometimes the way you, you, you just kind of uh, get them to that they end up going to being straight or even down just a tiny bit. I'm just going to cut that for a length. You want these a little longer than your normal boatman legs. Um, there's one thing that Gary taught me is that that uh, these, uh, if you got longer legs, and it, I know it sounds weird, but he's done the research on it and done it out in the field. If you've got longer legs, it won't spin as much. Because that's the one problem with boatmen is they love to spin. So again, I'm just going to come back forward and backwards here, figure right through. I'm going to fold my legs back, and now I'm going to build up in front of the legs. Just keep building up until you've got that coming right off that bead nicely. And then come back here. Just do another figure eight through. Come back again. Now I'm only going to go about maybe that far. And then back again. And figure eight through. Every time you come forward, figure eight through. And then build up a little bit more in front again. And that is looking pretty good. I'm just going to just clean up this little bit of a hump right here that I've created with that figure eight. I mean, that's just a, that's just for us fly tires. It's not for the fish. So now I'm going to come back to about there. Okay. I'm going to take the shell back right over that bead. You want to be in the center of that bead. And then just... Five or six turns there, make sure it's nicely centered. Okay. Good. And then I'm going to leave that alone for now, the tail, this piece here, just to leave it alone. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a whip finish. Now it's good to have, if you've got it, the larger whip finishing tool. That's what this is here, it's got a larger gap. Just carefully give that a bit of a whip finish and tighten. Got to be careful with this this uh, micro tinsel because when you whip finish it, it can break. So got to be careful. Just cut that off. Okay. Now take your whatever resin you like. Uh, today I'm using Golf Thinman. So Golf Thinman is what I'm using today. Just gonna put one little tiny layer right on the top here. Okay. Bob chin and just spread that out nicely. About there. Nail it with my light. That just protects that shell back. You can see how this stuff glows, eh? It just glows. The shell back and these legs, these local legs. Okay, turn that off. Now I'm going to turn it upside down. Sometimes I'll even reposition it a little bit. Another little coating down in the bottom here. And then take that coating and spread it out to the sides. This coating, all this does, now you can use Sally Hansen's. You can use a, a resin. It's totally up to you what you like for your coatings on your chronomids and other things. But you do want to coat these because uh, especially if you're going after uh, toothy critters like tigers and browns, uh, they they will chew this braid up, right? So, and uh, yeah, so just making sure that's staying how I want it. Now I'm going to hit that with a light. Just get that nicely cured.
and that is it. That is the uh, the fly. It's pretty well finished. Now you can you can. I like roughing up this this butt section, and I just make it just a little bit shorter than that. It's more an attractant movement thing than anything else. Just give that a little bit of a rough up. And there you go. That is your finished fly. Um, yeah, so if you guys want to give that one a try, give her. Uh, works really, really well. Um, floating line uh, or a, just a sink tip, but you want to be close to the surface with these. Um, and if you want to get any of these materials, you can go to Fly Life Canada and uh, use the code FLYFISHFANATIC10 and you'll get a 10% discount on anything. So, alrighty. So if you like that, give her a thumbs up. If you've uh, subscribed, thank you very much. If you have not, uh, please consider doing so. Spread the word, tell your friends. Once I hit a thousand subscribers, I'll be giving away a, a selection of flies I tied on this channel, as well as a copy of both the books I wrote, my insect guide and my ooh, beginner's guide. Alrighty, tight lines everyone. Have a great day.